the grid view. And after the updating has occurred, either successfully or unsuccessfully, after we've updated the grid view, call this method. Grid view one, row updated. That's in our code behind file. This consists of grid view one, row updated. That automatically gets passed a couple of parameters. One of those parameters is the grid view updated event args, which is sort of a report of what happened. Success, failures, and so on. We look to see if there is a problem. There's a problem based on whether there's an exception object or not as part of the report. So we look and we make sure that exception report, we look to see if that exception report is not null. In other words, is there something there? If it is no, it means there wasn't an error. So we don't have to do anything. We just let it continue on its merry way. If, however, there was an error, that is, if that object was not no, we want to handle it. How do we handle it? Well, we try to display a more user-friendly error message. So, problem updating. I could even do something like this. Possible causes. Duplicate category name. System maintenance. Occurring. Make that message whatever I want. Call Don Huffman. <laughs> at, does anyone know his extension? Shoot. All right. <laughs> so we display our error message, being as descriptive as we want to be, knowing that at this point we don't really know what went wrong. There's a bunch of things that could go wrong when you get a database update error. We know of one, right, the fact that it's a duplicate category. In fact, we're forcing that error to occur. But there could be other things. The database server could have just blown up a second ago. All right? Someone could have, you know, any number of things could have happened. So therefore, we could maybe put some possible causes there. And we could maybe do a little bit better job, and we'll talk about how we can do that next time. But right now, all we know, all we have determined with this if statement is that there's some kind of error. So I can put a list of possible causes. And then the last thing I have to do is I have to tell the framework, okay, I've handled this one. You don't have to worry about it anymore. So now let's go and run this. And I can go and edit this. And I can go and put sports in here. I can click update and we get my nice little error message. Problem update. Possible cause. Duplicate category name. Systems maintenance occurring. Call Don Huffman at. So it tried to do the update. It failed. But because we sort of intervened and said we're going to handle this by putting up our error message. Something that I think is going to be descriptive and understandable to my users. We don't get that big, ugly system error. All right? So we let it fail. We, we let it try it, see if it fails or not. And then we go in and we handle it, and we just make sure that the user gets reported a good error message. So that's a third way to handle errors. So we can try to design our form by using drop downs or whatever so that an error is not even possible. We can do validation in some cases. But even if we do those other things, there's always those unexpected errors. There's always those errors that happen for reasons that we can't entirely anticipate. And for those, we want to put some kind of processing like this in to catch those errors and display a nice descriptive error message instead of just a system error. Yes? So I'm assuming this all works because it checks your code behind file before actually drawing the exception back to the user. And that's just built into ASP. Yes, it's built into 
framework, if there's a problem, all right, if there's a problem, it calls all the methods that you have coded, the row updating, the row updated. If that e dot exception handled is still set to false, and the framework gets it at that point, it's going to throw the error. So yes, your code happens before the code that's part of the framework that handles the errors gets called. Gives you the first shot at handling. And that's why saying we handle this exception doesn't throw the That's why we handle this exception doesn't show the system error then. Because it sees a framework, oh, okay, you got this one, fine. All right. What we're slowly building on is taking that rudimentary framework that did some nice stuff quick and dirty, but wasn't really industrial strength, right? I mean, that, the, the code that we had here wasn't production ready, you know? And so we're going to tweak it. So we tweaked it a couple different ways. We're going to continue along this path next time when we do things like adding drop downs doing a confirmation when we go to delete. So when we click delete, it doesn't just zap the thing. It, it warns us first that it's going to delete something. And we'll go and we'll continue on this path of customizing these um, grid views and details views uh, to do maintenance. All right. See you over in lab.